stuff just through people who teach you or watching a TV program or even just going to church once in a while. You need to know and experience God for yourself. And the way you come to know God's faithfulness is to step out and trust Him in situations, refuse to try to, to refuse to get in the works of the place trying to make something happen yourself. If you know God is telling you to leave it alone, then you leave it alone because the easiest thing in the world to do is try to get in and do what only God can do. And all we do is just put it off, put it off, make it take longer and we make it harder. Get to know God. Let him prove to you what he can do in your life. Know who you are in him. And then know the power that's available to you as a believer in Jesus Christ. You have power. Holy Ghost power belongs to you. Let's look at Acts 1.8. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit that is with you all the time. Never leave you. Never. Even when you're not so good, he doesn't leave. And you shall receive power, <laughs> ability, efficiency, and might. You see that? Ability, efficiency, and might. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the very ends of the earth. Now that doesn't mean that the power of God is going to come on you and every one of you is going to become a preacher. To be a witness literally means that God is going to give us the power to be the kind of people that he wants us to be so we can get out in the world and represent him and be a light in a dark place. In other words, he'll give you the power to have peace in the midst of a storm. He will give you the power not to worry when you've got a huge problem. He'll give you the power to believe that your kids are going to turn out get good when looking at them, you think there is no hope for you at all. Listen, one of our grandsons, a matter of fact, he's, he's here. He works at the resource table. His name's DJ, and he gave, a, he gave a testimony recently, and there's going to be a piece in our magazine about him. DJ, as he became a teenager, he just kind of wanted to go his own way, and he thought his parents were too strict, like many teenagers do, and he got mixed up with the wrong crowd, like many kids do, and, and um, the day that he was 18, he moved out of the house, and for the next year, he just lived like this totally, unbelievably, ungodly, ridiculous life. I mean, literally, for a year... He stayed high on drugs and drunk. He got down to where he was skin and bones. He, he was in jail. I mean, it was just an absolute unbelievable mess. One of his best friends died from an overdose of drugs. And he finally came to the end of himself. And I'll tell you, sometimes you just got to leave people alone for a little while. And just let them kind of get over it. You know? I mean, his parents continued to love him through that. You know, we would see him once in a while, hug him and love him, tell him we loved him. And, you know, sometimes it doesn't do one bit of good to preach to somebody. Matter of fact, the more you try to preach to them, the worse you're going to make it. They already know they're not living right. Point your finger at somebody that's not living right and say you're not living right. That's not telling them anything they don't already know. And so he called his parents in the middle of the night one night, was just... I think he was high or something, he said. And he, he said, I can't live like this anymore. Can I come home? They went and got him. And I'm telling you what, that boy had his gut full of sin. And he turned around. And he is serving God. He's married now. He's got a, got a baby. He's working in the ministry. He's giving his testimony. He just... He, he loves the Lord. And so I just want to tell you, when things look the bleakest, come on. And I'm saying this for some of you parents who have got kids in trouble. When things look the worst, when they look the darkest and the bleakest, that's not when you want to give up. Amen? I've got a saying that I came up with when I'm working out with my trainer and I'm having a hard day, which I did one day last week. It was like, get this over with. 
And so he, he said, well, would you, would you rather only do, you know, eight reps instead of 12 or whatever? And I've got this thing I say, I say, this is no day to turn back. <laughs> and sometimes you just got to be like a spiritual bulldog and you just got to say, this is no day to turn back. Things look the worst, but I'm going to believe the most. I don't care what it looks like. I believe that God is working, and I'm not going to give up on my kids. My father, who abused me, I prayed for him for at least 40 years before he accepted Christ. At least. And I didn't pray for him every day or all day long or anything like that. But when he'd come to my heart, I would just say, God, I know you can do it. I don't know how you're going to do it, but I believe that you can do it. Please bring him to the end of himself. And save him. And it's a long story I don't have time to get into, but I had the privilege of leading him to Christ, baptizing him in water, and I know that he is in heaven right now. And so, don't give up. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, tonight at the end of this service, we're going to wait about four or five minutes. You think you can be still four or five minutes? Well, we'll see. You'd be surprised what all... I tell you, one of the things we don't know how to do sometimes is just get still and quiet. It's almost like something you have to acquire an ability to do it. And you know, if you really want to be led by the Spirit, sometimes you've got to get quiet. You've got to wait a little bit because He's not in a big hurry like we are. Thanks for listening. Gain understanding on who the Holy Spirit is.